Hey everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing the undergarment problem that Meghan Markle has. She has a big problem with her undergarments and it's very, very obvious. Now, some might think, why are you using Meg? Are you picking on her? What have you? No. I'm using Meghan Markle as an example because when you look at just one person across many different outfits, many different perhaps mistakes or faux pas or successes, you are eliminating the variables of different body types across different people with different shapes and different sizes and things like that. You have none of those variables. You're just looking at the one person. You're also eliminating to some degree style and taste differences across different people. By eliminating those style concern variables, we're able to just focus on the undergarment fails themselves, how they could be avoided or why they happened. She also happened to have many, many problems in this department. So she provides a thorough example of what not to do, while many other public figures just simply do not have this plethora of examples of fashion fails or faux pas problems related to undergarments specifically. At least I haven't found any other celebrities or public figures with this many examples, which we can use as learning opportunities. It's not about picking on the Meg, whether you like her or not. We're just using her as an example here when it comes to how undergarments impact our overall finish and overall look. Now, if you wanna learn how to avoid these types of fashion fails, then be sure to subscribe so you do not miss part two, which will be coming out in the next few days, hopefully. And it will include a bra tutorial with all of my personal best tips for bras, shopping bras, finding the right ones, as well as my personal recommendations of bras, how to measure yourself for bras, how to be sure you're getting a good fit with your bra, even down to like panties and undergarments, which ones I would personally recommend that I myself have tried and are not like outrageously expensive. We're going to be covering all sorts of foundation layers, various undergarments, lingerie, of all sorts, as well as the wardrobe secrets that people in the public eye, including the royal family, use to make sure they have a seamless polished finish and avoid those sorts of faux pas. So I'll be including some of those tips and tricks and secrets that people in the public eye rely on to have success in their wardrobe. So let's get into these fashion fails and why they matter, particularly as it comes into the context in which these outfits were worn. Because as we all know, there are are different settings and different places where certain things are acceptable and not and nobody expects you to look perfect and have all the foundation garments you need and all those extra precautions in place when you're running to the supermarket or doing chores or you're on a day off people don't expect that that is not real life but when you're out there in a situation where you're going to be seen an important occasion a special occasion you're presenting or giving a speech or whatever you're going to be photographed you just want to look professional or put together or look your best. These are the situations where it matters. All of these examples included in today's video from Meghan Markle are times where she was on professional duties, official engagements, and representing the queen. Well, for the most part. Most of them are during her time with the royal family, but all of them are in professional settings where you would expect someone to be dressed their best and take those extra precautions to not have undergarment fashion faux pas. Let's begin with this most notorious outfit. This is the gray Roland Moray dress she wore for a visit in Ireland. It was one of her very first official engagements with Prince Harry. We have a way too big handbag, completely out of place here. We also have this awkward cascading panel. The waistline isn't hitting her at a very good point. And then this bra. The worst part of this outfit is this cookie cutter bra. It's like a cookie cutter smooshed onto her chest. It's just the worst thing you could ever imagine. It's the worst thing, last thing you would ever want in an outfit. It made the whole thing look incredibly cheap. And this was an expensive dress. At first, when I first saw this in the news in real time, I felt bad for her. I was like, oh dear, what a shame. She needs help. She is far too awkward. And this was before I had any info on her vibe or intel on her character, okay? I was like, oh no, can't believe this happened. Somebody's gonna need to tell her or help her because that's really bad. I didn't know she was not being nice at the time. Part of the problem is that this dress is way too tight. When your outer garment, your shirt or your dress is way too tight, like 
it can be a little tight or snug or form fitting without this being a problem. But if it's like legit too tight the way this one is, then your undergarments are going to be much more obvious and it's much harder to hide them even if you wear a good foundation layer. In fact, if it's far too tight, you might not even be able to get it on with an under layer like a slip or a base layer. You wouldn't even be able to get it on if your dress is like legit way too tight. So this too tight dress is contributing to the problem. This cascading panel down the front, it looks a little bit like a napkin hanging down. I'm not a huge fan of it. It does bring some degree of balance to her broad shoulders, but it almost just looks a little too much, in part because she does have very thin legs and ankles. So it's kind of giving the impression that her legs and ankles are a little too thin for the big cascading panel. I think if she wore block heels or lower high heels, didn't have such high high heels, maybe closer to like a two and a half inch or a three inch maybe at most, it wouldn't have given quite as dramatic of an impression. This one here is very similar. This dark blue one was a lot better. The fabric and design in the gray one just don't vibe together as nicely and give as nice of a finish. Regardless, if she had had the right size, a smoothing layer would have helped to some degree. But again, if it's too tight, no matter what, it's gonna be much harder to get a smooth finish. The real problem is the bra though. The bra is padded and too tight. And then it's got the too tight dress on top of it. So it's just creating this trifecta of focal point of the bra. It's adding visual noise. It's making the whole thing look messy and cheap, but it's mostly biggest problem here is that this is incredibly unprofessional. This is so unprofessional, it's cringeworthy. So having a padded bra is immediately going to pull it away from you much more easily. It's not going to have as seamless and smooth of a finish, which we'll get more into in the undergarment tutorial. I'll show you guys some examples of how an unlined bra versus a padded bra versus just one that's a molded cup and not padded give you drastically different finishes. And padded bras are notorious for kind of pulling away a little bit and giving a really artificial look to the bust. And this is something Meghan Markle does a lot. And I can understand wanting to add a little bit to her bust. She has a really small bust naturally, so wanting to add a little padding there can make sense. And it can create a little bit more balance or just women can find it to be feel more flattering or look more flattering with outfits if they have a little bit more in the bust than what they're naturally working with if they're small chested. Not everybody, but some women feel that way. But if you're going for a padded bra and it's strapless, it's particularly difficult to get a seamless look. You're almost always, if it's padded and strapless, going to have visible lines across the top of the strapless bra and it's often going to have a little bit of that pulling away effect that we see here where it just clearly looks incongruous and ill-fitting. Next up we have the RAF Centenary Service in this Dior outfit. Once again we have a strapless bra outline and the dress itself is way too tight and the strapless bra is ill-fitting. It's probably the same one, who knows? Another element of this presentation that lends itself to the idea that she wears a padded bra that is kind of pulling away and giving a poor fit is the fact that these dresses often end up too tight across the chest and torso area. But especially something like Dior, you would imagine had been tailored to her really carefully. If she's wearing an unpadded bra or one with less padding for the fittings and then puts a padded bra on for the actual wear of the outfit the actual day then it will not only be too tight across that area but it can also make the bra look like it's being smushed or pushed around contributing to that sort of fake and and messy look Think of a time that you had on an uncomfortable bra, like straps that were falling down or something like that, like it was just too tight or whatever, and it left you feeling less confident. It always makes us feel less present in the moment. We're less ready to engage. We can even get irritable if we're particularly uncomfortable. When we know that we have as smooth of a finish as possible and everything fits and is at least mostly comfortable, not having to fidget with it or adjust a bunch, then we stand taller we feel more confident, and we're much more present and in the moment. That's definitely the vibe that Catherine gives. She doesn't give an uncomfortable, I want to get this over with sort of a vibe. She gives a very comfortable, present vibe when she's around. This may be one of the factors contributing to why Meghan Markle came off so badly, that perhaps she was cognizant of some of these problems and felt uncomfortable and less confident. Maybe that was 
part of why there were so many sour looks. Who knows? I'm just saying it could have been one of many elements to the situation. Next we have Commonwealth Day here where green was not an allowed color, technically speaking. You are asked or it's tradition for Commonwealth Day to wear patriotic colors, which in this case would be red, white, or blue. So the green color was a bad choice and many viewed it as really disrespectful. The strapless bra here though was completely inexcusable. Unlike the boat neck styles that we saw in the previous two outfits here, she had covered shoulders. Like this was completely absurd to wear a strapless bra like this. A t-shirt bra, a smoothing tank, something with a built-in bra, a posture bra, any of those things would have been great options. There is zero reason or need to wear a strapless bra in this situation. So why did this happen? Possible theories are that she was wearing lingerie under outfits. Now, if it's date night, go for it. Wear the lingerie under your outfit. You're not being seen by the masses. You're not getting photographed. You're having like some private dinner and off for the evening, like whatever, go for it. Wear something sexy no matter if it makes your finish less smooth under your clothes. I mean, it's not like the most classy option if it's very obvious, but if it's not super obvious, then nobody's gonna care in your private life. But for something like this, the priority should have been the occasion. One in which you're gonna be photographed, you're going to a service, you're potentially at some a venue like a church, then you need to prioritize that. That should be the top priority. So I personally don't think she was wearing lingerie under these outfits. My experience is that it's way more obvious. You know, you have frilly bits across here, extra straps, buckles, things like that. All the straps, really obvious if you have on some sort of sexy bodysuit or something like that underneath your clothes, it's pretty obvious most of the time. So I'm not fully behind that theory, but some other theories include that she thought she was going to be having a lot of headlines about her attractiveness. And when this wasn't happening, she was acting out via clothes and visible undergarments, the way, you know, really immature, perhaps like teenagers tend to do, they want that attention. So if they're not getting it, they go further and further and they're pushing for that attention somehow, even to their detriment. Another uh, theory is that she's just simply clueless. Um, people high in narcissism will judge other people's appearances really, really harshly while ignoring their own. And perhaps this is just one of those manifestations of it, who knows? But why does it matter? In the grand scheme of things, is it the biggest deal in the world? No, but if you are in this sort of a situation in this platform where you're at this time representing the queen, then it does matter. Being polished and presentable is simply required. Most ladies do wear bras. And so some would say, what's the big deal if a bra is showing? Like we all know we wear them, what's the big deal? Well, the thing is, is that it is possible in these outfits for it to not be showing or for at least it to not be this obvious. Hundreds of public figures managed to do it. So why didn't the Meg? It just shows a lack of effort or care in this department. She is rather small chested just talking about the body as it is. I'm not saying this is good or bad or criticizing in any way. We all have different shapes. She is somebody who is slightly more small chested. So it's clear that she wears padded bras a lot of the time, but not all of the time. The padded bras, as I said, often lift away from the chest more. They look less natural. They give a less seamless finish, but also by wearing a variety of levels of bra padding, you run further risk of sizing problems in your wardrobe around the armpits, the chest, the shoulder area, and the bust areas, especially if you're wearing a different bra for your fittings than for the actual event. But another problem that this presents is this inconsistency across your appearance. You really wanna avoid that if you're in the public eye. Like think about news broadcasters as an example. They have a smooth finish and they have a good foundation layer and they're really consistent with their bra choices. Their bust is not dramatically different across different outfits, different days throughout the week. And the use of padded bras some of the time will often give people this level of inconsistency that we can see with Meghan Markle. And it's just less professional and some might consider it to be kind of embarrassing at times. Next up we have the New Zealand skirt in which she was just charging forth to traumatize the people of New Zealand with her undies on show. 
This was an otherwise great outfit though, so it's really, really disappointing. It gives her great proportions. It's very balancing to her. The silhouette is nice, but it just simply doesn't photograph well because she didn't wear a slip. This whole thing could have been avoided with a slip. I mean, it's just really awkward. Think about kids who are half her height. It's just terrible. It's a terrible idea. It's disrespectful. It's kind of gross. It's not okay. This is something that people bring up sometimes. If a man were wearing something sheer where his briefs and whatnot were very, very visible and his crotch became a focal point of an outfit and he was going to shake hands with children, people would be super freaked out by it. People throw that comment around a lot and I think there is validity to it in this setting. When you are in this situation representing the queen, you should definitely not wear sheer stuff. Slips in general are really great, especially for these types of occasions. They help avoid a Marilyn Monroe type moment, wind sucking the skirt between your legs, skirts flow nicer and have more movement and just look prettier when you have on a slip. And then obviously they provide coverage for sheer skirts like this one. Here we have a bra on show from a purposely unbuttoned shirt. Um, the face, the issue happening here, all of it is just a little too contrived looking in the absolute worst way. This shirt is expensive. It's not going to come unbuttoned the way a cheap shirt might. It had to have been actively unbuttoned by the Meg just in time to walk past these photographers. And it even looks like she's using her arm to sort of like pull open the shirt a bit. It's just hilariously desperate and tacky. My opinion is this was definitely not a mistake, obviously. There's also a weird crease in the front of the skirt here in this outfit that I'm really not sure what's going on there. This is just textbook attention-seeking moment. Another time she had some fails was this brown turtleneck outfit. This was an attempt at a tonal outfit of browns, but one too many was involved between the shades of brown and the textures for it to be really truly successful. With this satin skirt, the coat should have been more close in tone to the turtleneck to be more cohesive. The biggest problem though is the sweat stains. Just wear your coat out of the building and hide that. It's icky, it's terrible, you do not want your pictures circulated in the media with a sweat stain. Like, horrible. But the bra itself is also a problem. She has on either a strapless bra or some sort of poorly fitted bralette with wide set straps. But it just looks bad. Her bust doesn't have a flattering shape here and we can see the outline of whatever bra she has on. She should have just gone for a classic t-shirt bra. That is what they are made for, they are made for these types of tops. They have completely smooth cups, there's no seams or lace, and they give you a nice, perfect look. And this is just not at all. People at this level in the public eye have the funds to get bras to match their tops. They have enough funds to get many, many different bras in many different colors and even have them recovered. If they have a bra that they know fits them perfectly and gives them the perfect look, they can have a seamstress sew a nice smooth darker color on top of it or a nude color on top of it so you can have it for all your different shirts and different needs. This is a turtleneck. There's just no excuse for Megan to not have a smooth, perfect finish. It is a strapless bra. Like, that's just absolutely insane to opt for a strapless bra with a turtleneck top. Like, just insanity. Sometimes, especially people with smaller busts, will gravitate towards strapless bras because they might find straps fall down a lot, but that just means you're wearing the wrong size bra. You probably have too big of a band size or something like that, or you're wearing a style that has wide set straps and you need one with more narrow straps. Like, you're just wearing the wrong bra if they're always falling down. Or sometimes people will opt for a strapless bra because they don't like the straps being visible along the shoulder blade or something like that but that's really minor compared to this cookies cutter status that's just horrible. Much of these problems can be solved by wearing a foundation tank or just sort of like a shapewear tank, but you buy it a size or two up so it's not tight and restrictive and feeling uncomfortable. It just adds that layer of smoothness to hide, for example, bra straps along the back of your shoulder blades. Like it would hide that and smooth it out. So there's really just no excuse. It's clear that Meghan Markle didn't take any effort to get the right undergarments for her outfits. These sorts of stunts or mistakes or whatever they were, weren't giving her the attention that she wanted. It definitely gave the press and the public tacky, unpolished vibes, a lack of effort and respect for the role that she was in. And some of these events were held in churches, for goodness sakes. So it's understandable that people were 
bothered by or put off of these sorts of mistakes happening. It may have also been her attempts at thirst traps or something like that, and having them fail further perpetuated this media is mean narrative that she went off of, that she was trying desperately to get certain attention and she wasn't, so she's even more vindictive or mad about the media, perhaps. These are just theories people have floated because it's really hard to understand why somebody would repeatedly make these types of mistakes. But next up we have the Lion King premiere where she had a way too tight strapless bra here. It even looks like she used boob tape to squash them together because there's a really unnatural strange shape to her actual bust here. So perhaps she had a strapless bra on and boob tape to try to achieve some degree of cleavage and it just ended up giving a chubby vibe between the too tight dress and the too tight ill-fitting bra. It made her look too big for this dress which is unfair. She's not chubby, she just has an ill-fitting situation happening here which tends to give the impression to the eye, this sort of visual chubby vibe, like you're too big for the clothes or the clothes are too small for you or something, reads as chubby even though you're not. It's my opinion, just looking at pictures, that she's probably rather wide set and has a small bust, so that can present some challenges and you won't be as easily able to achieve like full looking cleavage even with push-up bras. But that's just one of those things that by the time you're an adult, you know, we all just have to accept our bodies as they are and certain things you just can't change. And so you just have to go with the things that will actually work and flatter yourself regardless of what you wish you looked like or what size you wish you were. It's more important to work with what you got and make that work as best you can. Moving on, we have the belly button on show problem. Having your belly button create a focal point when it shouldn't is a disaster. Like never would you see the queens, princesses, or other royals of Europe allowing their belly button to be visible under their dresses and clothes. It just doesn't happen. I, I don't think I've ever seen it outside of Hollywood and the Meg. Oftentimes, if, you, if you're wearing nylons, they come up high enough to eliminate this problem all on their own. But if you're not wearing nylons, the way Meg, we saw skip nylons a lot of the times, then you definitely need to have a slip or a smoothing garment to hide that and smooth that area out because it just looks bad. It looks tacky. It looks unprofessional. It's just awful. We also saw a terribly obvious major VPL at Invictus Games. I have a great tip to avoid that in the part two where we discuss undergarments. Foundation layers are really valuable when you're going to be photographed or in these types of situations. Anytime you're doing something that's important to you, foundation layers can give you that confidence to really be present. Camera is unflattering and you're going to be photographed or videographed from many different angles, in movement, things like that. You wanna take those precautions so that you have the best possible outcome and you don't need to think about it. You don't need to worry about it. You can just go out there feeling confident that, well, I've done everything I can. I have on these foundation layers to give me a smooth finish, not have visible panty lines, not have visible bra lines, and I can just enjoy the event and do my best or do my job. Like, that's the whole point. It's not about modesty so much as confidence and feeling good and having a good result for yourself, for others, and for the camera. We judge with our eyes. Like it or not, we just do. It's how we are wired. And I don't mean judging based on appearances like features, like beauty and weight and size. I, I mean more like how you dress, your grooming, your hygiene. Having a polished presentation is what we take in instantly with our eyes when we see somebody. When we put thought into that, we give off a way better impression than those who don't and who have these sorts of mistakes the way Megan had. Visual information like panty lines, bra lines, belly buttons give a sloppy impression that you didn't care, that you're messy, you're unorganized. You look like you don't have your shit together, basically. So of course that doesn't matter for every single day, but when you're in this sort of privileged position, you're in the public eye or you're doing something professional, then it does matter and it makes a world of difference. You want to avoid these types of things at all costs because like it or not, it does damage people's public image. Whether it's fair or not, it just does. It seems like she was very much jumping to those designer outfits without paying attention to whether they would actually suit the occasion 
which included provisions for photography, so things that are like sheer would have been avoided entirely. And when shopping, Megan seemed much more focused on labels rather than whether the outfit would look good, suited the occasion, would flatter her body, be photogenic, etc. And it seemed that translated all the way down to her undergarments. She definitely should have been more focused on the weight, opacity, flow, and color of the outfits as well as their fit much, much, much more than she was. I think if she wasn't so unkind and had such a notorious reputation for being rude, this wouldn't have been as big of a problem for her. I think people would have cut her a lot more slack. In theory, people would have been able to get through to her to help her out with these sorts of things. But these mistakes in these settings made her look really out of place. And they didn't have to. They're really easily avoidable. So ultimately, it was just one piece as to why she ended up looking out of place and potentially one of the reasons why she may have came across more awkward. But let me know what you think. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you have a happy day ahead and I will see you next time. Bye.